The Fezzer is family. That's what it is, family. Love, we rejoice together, we laugh together, we dance together. We dance in this church. We worship in this church. I love coming to Bethesda because the people there, they're so warm. And um, when you walk through the door, um, you can feel the sense of um, togetherness. Bethesda for me has been a home away from home. It has been a welcoming family and it's just been an honor to be able to worship. I enjoy coming to Bethesda because I see it as a second home. It's my second family and um, when I'm here I'm very happy and I look forward to coming here and um, seeing all my family. Because we have friends here and it's a very loving church we appreciate all the people. A sense of oneness and it's um, you can feel the presence of God among the people because they demonstrate love. Bethesda in one word is um, a loving place. It has everything you can imagine. On Sundays we are more excited than every other day of the week because we think about coming in where we can be ourselves and not too much of what person think but when God is moving in his face. What Bethesda means to me is love, love. God could have placed us anywhere but I'm so thankful that he placed us here because here we experience true worship, true love and when we come here we have an awesome time oh, yeah. in the Lord but we don't just come here to have that awesome time. Everyone comes in already ready to worship. When you leave this place you will leave with the presence of God. It will follow you throughout the week. That's one thing I love about this church, we worship. My name is Delroy Fraser, my wife Tricia Fraser, and we are so glad that you are tuning with us in our morning service. We pray you will be blessed.
whatever we are faith in, whatever we are born in, we know that God deserves our praise. He's in control over everything. So whatever your worries are, whatever you're struggling with, know that God is good and His mercies endure forever. I'm going to turn right over to the praise worship team right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. New mercies. Praise the Lord. New grace. Praise the Lord. New breath. Praise the Lord. Life this morning. Praise the Lord. Eyesight this morning. Praise the Lord. We can hear. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are standing this morning. Praise the Lord. Our hearts are beating. Praise the Lord. We have our fingers and our toes. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. Praise the Lord. God is a mighty God. Praise the Lord. God is an awesome God. Praise the Lord. God is a faithful God. Praise the Lord. God is a giving God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
And as I be calling him our best praise, he deserves our best praise. Before I go any further, I'm going to go to the pastor choir. I'm on my way to the church. I know my pastor didn't mean to, but I'm um, going to call that my mom had to rush grandma to the hospital. And just yesterday, we're at the house and well, looks well. My God knows what's going on. And then, the relative I, I shared with y'all in the WhatsApp in New York, now she's on life support. It's just a matter of days. There's nothing more that they can do. Their job is finished. And we're at my parents' house yesterday to celebrate the anniversary. Just before we're leaving, my dad had a call from his older sister, who got about her daughter in law. We're all on the deck, just kind of, you know, we don't have words to say. I can only imagine their church right now because my cousin is a pastor of this church, and I can only imagine what they're going through that their pastor's wife is on life support. What am I saying? There's no way. We can come in the presence of God and we're in our right minds and we allow a situation to stop us from worshiping Him. Because there's somebody right now who's on life support who cannot verbally I 
pray for her husband, Noel Henry, God said him, and her son, their son, Kyle Henry, and the church showers up blessings to God. And they're going through some questions. Or thought. I pray that right now in that service, they're trusting you, God, that you are the I am that I am. We thank you. We honor you. And God, we know that you have everything under control. So we pray and believe that it is well. It is done. In Christ's name, all God people say, Amen and Amen. This is standing, please, for retire your offerings into your hands as we prepare to give a portion back to God. Now, put your hands for His wonderful blessings, all that He has blessed us with. I always say, you will always say, whenever anyone do any blessing offering, it is a motto here that even if you have nothing to give, step out of faith. Walk in faith. Touch the offering bubble in faith. And you walk in confidence. That God, even if I don't have it, I still trust you. So I'm walking in belief that when I do have it, you already put it into practice. Hello? Amen. Never you stay in your seat, say, I have nothing to give. So I won't walk up. You're hurting yourself. Don't worry about it. Well, how it looks to someone else. Between you and God. So hold that tight, hold up offerings, the conference in your hands, and those who are going to give online through the device, hold your device in your hands in conference. God, as we are right now that about to give, I thank you for everyone in the building and those who are watching now. As we're going to pause and say thank you for the job that you have blessed us with. And for those who are not working, I thank you, we thank you, how you keep them going and going. They have food on the table, they have clothes on their back, they have roof over their head. God, you are still providing for them. That we say, thank you. Right now, God, imagine that you are touching your children's hearts. They're not just giving because it looks good. Ah, they're giving with a cheerful heart. Not about the amount. But God, I'm asking you to bless this offering in a special way. As I always pray, so that this offering can be a blessing to this church. So that this church can be a blessing to the city of Oakville and around the world. You have done it before. And we know you're going to do it again. Because you are God. And you sit high above the world. You look down below. And God, sometimes even when we don't deserve it, you still shower us with blessings. So God, help us not to be stingy in our giving. We all have needs, but God, we know what your word says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So God, we're putting you first. And everything else will be added unto you. I would say thank you that we give. We give joyfully in celebration of Christ's name. All God will say amen. Please follow the instructions of the ushers. And when a praising to sing, please stand to your feet and sing with them. Worship with them. It's a time of celebration. You don't celebrate sitting down. You don't go to a party and sit down. And you're tired. You step on your feet and say, God, I thank you. So when you give, you give in joy. So follow the instructions of the usher and I'll be back. God bless you.
praying, especially when it comes to the music ministry of this church. Earnestly pray. You know, those people who said to me, friends of mine, if you need me, I will come. But I didn't want someone to come and do me a favor. You're coming here, you're coming to work with us and to grow with us. Because I know, and you all know, that through praise and worship, it could mend the broken heart. But it could cause division. Serious division. stories, you all know this, Paul and Silas, they had praise and worship. In spite of the situation, some of us, we couldn't do what they did, but we allowed the Spirit to stop us. It just took two of them ready. And God answered their prayer through praise and worship. They felt it through worship. And can I say this? It was anointed praise and worship. And anybody can sing in spirit and truth, with a free heart, that fighting for a position and title. Okay. In four and a half years, and we have gone through some turbulence, but we remain steadfast and moving. But we stayed on our knees. Never tell someone, leave where you are from over here. That's not ministry. And whatever your soul shall read. Is the right way. But today, I want my wife to go anoint these singers of the year. Because they made some available. I want to set a song that was sung earlier. But we want nobody greater. I search all over. Couldn't find nobody. Donovan, this time we turn to the telephone to call someone. Yes. We're not getting them. Hallelujah. God said, I'm here. So I'm asking my wife, she's going to anoint these singers here. I'm going to church to stretch your hands. She has an agreement. Yes. An agreement because this is just the beginning. I, I told you, I prayed to God. We will have a Bethesda choir. It is going to happen. Try to. The children, it's going to happen. Sister Ned, it's going to happen. Church, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I will wait until God says, now the time. But it's going to happen. But I'm asking to stretch your hands to the singers right now. Because they have their own needs, but they need some available. They are at the front line. Through prayer and worship, they set the atmosphere. They're the one that been preaching easy. God, right now, I place Sister Brittany, Sister Renee, Sister Sandra before you, God. You know everything about them. You know their hearts, you know their needs, you know their desires. And sometimes, God, you don't want to be up here because of what they're going through. But God, I thank you for their availability. And they put you first. God, I pray that you'll bless their families, bless their homes, bless their finances. Anything that you've been praying for, that God, they will see from the past. Because they make themselves available to you. So we pray for a bountiful blessing on Brittany, a blessing on Renee, and a blessing on Cassandra. God, and who you choose to raise up to join this army? God, they cannot come on this brave team with selfish hearts, but a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude to you. Because praying and worship is serious business. God, we thank you for what you have done now, but more of what you're about to do in this 
church. I do continue to pray and to trust you, God. That God, you will answer this church's prayers. And God, you have to answer it. Because we've been trusting you. But we're putting the devil on notice that he cannot touch this church. We're putting the devil on notice that he cannot touch these servants behind me, God. Because they're on a mission. Ah. They're on a mission. Pray for blessing. When they lay their head to rest, they are blessed. When they wake up in the morning, they are blessed. And not just them, but their families. Yeah. Not just them, but their families. Bless Brittany's family. God, wherever they may be, bless them right now. Bless Renee's family. I bless the Shadows family in Christ's name. And all God people say, all God people say, yeah, we say amen. It is sealed and it is done. Now let's pray for the kids and then we'll get into the message. God, as our children are about to go downstairs to church, I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. We believe in our children. And I thank you for the parents, grandparents, who bring them out week after week. God, I believe that God, they can turn their life into the church. Use them for the honor of the Lord. Bless the teachers who will be pouring into them. And we pray when they leave this place, they can tell the parents and grandparents what they learned into the heart of God. Apply it to them their life. So praise the true church into your kingdom. Christ's name. Amen. Kids, we go with Auntie Nicole and Auntie Tristan. And let's now get into the message. Please stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. As we get into the message today. After service, we're going to have a, a family business meeting. It won't be long. It won't be long. There's some important information we want to share with you. As we enter into a new church year, we are in a new church year. A new season. New beginnings. Turn your Bible with the first Corinthians chapter 1. And I've been reading one, one verse, and that's verse 18. First Corinthians chapter 1. And I'm reading Verse 18. So I tell you the souls that sent you for me to read. And it reads For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. I'm going to read that again. For the preaching of the cross is, it is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. You may be seated. You may be seated. What I want to share to your family is this. A topic. A good battery, but a weak connection. A good battery, but a weak connection. Have you ever seen this commercial? I believe we all have. The Energizer Bunny commercial on TV. You know that commercial, the bunny appears beating on a drum and an announcer says, it's still going and going and going. On he goes across the desert, over the mountain, on and over the highways. Nothing seems to stop this little bunny. Now I want you to understand that the point of the commercial is not the bunny, but it is the battery. It is important to have good batteries because weak batteries cause problems. Cars with weak batteries have problems starting. Once the motor starts, the car usually runs. But it takes a good battery to get it started. And particularly in cold weather, a weak battery just won't do it. Tape recorders with weak batteries will drag. Flashlight with weak batteries will go dim. 
Market radio with weak, with weak batteries will fade. And your cordless and cell phone with weak batteries will be full of static and eventually disconnect themselves. Why? Because the battery is the power source. But even a good battery is only half the solution. There was a woman who was having trouble getting her car started. Every time she would turn on the ignition, she would get a clicking sound. So naturally, she thought that her battery was dead. Without checking with anyone, she sent her son down to purchase a brand new battery. When he returned, he put the battery in the car and she tried to start the car again, but she still got those same clicking sound. Finally, she called a mechanic who took, who, who took one look at her cable ends and analyzed her problem. And he said, ma'am, you have got a good battery, but your cables are bad. That day she learned a good lesson about the car. You must also make sure you have good connection to that good battery. My brothers and sisters, we too as born again Christians must make sure that we have a good connection to the power source and that source is Jesus. Now in our text, the cross of Christ represents the power of God unto salvation. It also represents the power of God for every believer to live in the spirit. But like the battery, we must have clear contact to keep the power flowing. We must be in harmony with the will of God to benefit from the power that is available to us. It is of little or no value at all to have the power of the Almighty God at our disposal and let our connection get rusty and corroded. You see that the, that corrosion caused a bad connection. There are too many believers who go through life hearing the clicking sound. That suggests that there is power under the hood that can't get through. Many of us have the ability to achieve greatness through the exercise of our gift, but every time we turn the switch, all we get is a we as Christians need to keep a clear connection with God. Yes, others might think that we are foolish for doing so, but we who are saved know that our power comes from the cross, the power of God. In the text, Paul writes to the church about the wisdom of preaching the truth of the cross of Christ. Paul explained that those who are saved recognize the cross as a symbol of the power of God. But to those outside of the faith, the church seemed to be involved in foolishness. What is this foolishness of which Paul speaks? Maybe it's the command to love your enemies or to pray for those who use you and abuse you. Maybe it's your belief that what you hope for will become evident through your faith. Maybe it's your belief that you are blessed when men persecute you and utter all manner of evil against you. Now, in the text it says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. And Romans 10, 14 remind us that the first step to releasing the power of God is by hearing the word of God. We got to hear God. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they are of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? Uh, so faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Singing, praying, testimony, and other forms of worship are inspiring to me. But it is the word of God that connects us to our power source. It is the word of God that directs me to the foot of the cross. When Paul spoke of the cross as the power source for Christians, he was not talking about the wooden stack or post in the ground. That was used for capital punishment. When Paul spoke of the cross as the power source for Christians, he referred to what the cross symbolized. That symbolism includes the sacrifice of Christ, his blood shed on Calvary, his death, burial, and resurrection. The crucifixion of Christ transformed the cross from a symbol of shame.
shame and embarrassment to a symbol of a mighty power of God. The cross, the cross embodies this symbol because Christ's death on the cross blotted out all sin that man foolish love from which there could be no redemption. This is what Paul wrote in his letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, verse 14. Blotted out the handwritten of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us. But Christ took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. When Paul preached about Christ and his crucifixion, the Jews considered it a stumbling block. The Greeks said that it was foolish, but I thought by to tell all of us today that those who perish are those who reject the power of the cross. They've, they've heard the story, but they refuse to accept its truth. They view preaching as a waste of time, foolishness, and they perish. I'm going somewhere. But to those of us who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Those of us who are believers know that at the foot of the cross we find our ability, our strength, and our power. Our knowledge of this historical account of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is our power source. It is our spiritual energizer that just keeps us going and going and going. There are many who are hooked up the wrong source. They're trying to use a six-volt translator to empower a 12-volt understanding. What am I saying? I'm saying that too many of God's created people are dependent on their own skills and education to get them through life. And I'm not knocking on education. Education is very important. Education skills is necessary. And I wish that every one of us get a good education. But when trouble comes, that battery is too small for the job. When you need real power, your battery will be hooked up to the power of who? We don't need education for that. We need Jesus. That's who we need. Connected to Jesus. Now in order to get the needed energy from your power source, you must have the right connection. You can have a good battery, but if the connection is wrong, there's no power to it. And since we are talking about connecting to a power source, we must also determine the type of connection required. So I've discovered there are two types of current, AC and DC. Some folks in our church are AC in nature. <laughs> Watch it. They suffer from being hooked up to the alternating current. They attend church on alternating Sundays. They pray on alternating occasions. They tithe on alternating occasions. What I'm trying to say is that they come to church when they feel like it. And they pray when it is convenient. That's the AC. Then there are those who are hooked up to the DC. Direct current. God is looking for some DC folks Dedicated Christians, people on whom he can depend. People who just don't do things when it's convenient for them, but press toward the mark daily. God is looking for those who will keep on going no matter. No matter what they're going through in their own personal life. Now, if we have a good battery and the connected cables are good, there's still one more thing you got to know. Connection must be tight. The battery must be free of external interference. There can be no space separating the cable from the battery. None. Paul said, it's best when he declared, nothing shall separate me from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus. And when it comes to the life of Christians, there must be no space that separates us from our master. The life of a Christian must be lived in such a way that there's nothing between our soul and our Savior. Yeah, I'm going somewhere. And what can correct your connection with God? Well, pride. Pride will stop your connection. Hatred will keep you from having a good connection with God. Jealousy will keep you from having a good connection with God. Strife, lying, stealing, anything that is not 
will keep you from having that good connection with God. And finally, make sure both cables are connected. Yeah. Along with the hot wire, there must be a ground cable. Oh, yeah, I'm going somewhere. You're grounded when you accept Christ as your personal Savior. Confess your mouth with the Lord that He is your Savior. Mm. Abide in the Word of God. Ground yourself to the cross of Christ. Then plunge into the foolishness of loving those who hate you. Woo! Plunge into the foolishness of believing with sin. Plunge into the foolishness of praying for those who use you and find a blessing in persecution on you. Ground yourself to the belief that in Christ we live, move, and have our beings. When you need power, you need to go to the one that created the tree of the flowers. When you need power, you need to go to the one that is able to heal the sick and raise the dead. Yes! When you need power, you need to go to the rock of your salvation. His name is Jesus. Before there was a 36 months good year power source, before there was a Napa 40 months power source, before there was a Sear 60 months guaranteed power source, Jesus was the original die hard battery. Yes! They crucified him. They stretched him wide. He was buried in the tomb. They tried to drain his battery. How many of you have been drained? And then we allow the situation to stop us from hearing what God is trying to tell us. We allow the situation to stop us that when we come to church, we choose not to raise our hands because of what someone said to us yesterday. I'm not going to that church because that member there is a wicked person. We allow things to stop us. And God isn't pleased with us. And you wonder why we don't feel that connection? Are we grounded in the word? Oh, watch this. Jesus died. He died for all of us. But he rose for them. He rose. My die hard, my ever ready, ready, my energizer, my dearer self, rose with all power in his hands. One thing working power. Soul saving power. Healing power in his hands. The question are you connected to this power? Now, we could. We could come here week after week. We could say to people, I believe in Jesus Christ. But you're still not connected to me. Word is cheap. I never forget when my wife and I, you know, we just got married, we were not in two weeks. And she goes, Babe, the word is cheap. Lord, tell me you love me. Show me you love me. And she went to talk about intimacy. You show me you love me. And she points toward the kitchen. Love me. Did you see it in here? They said it'd be clean. <laughs> and not just doing the dishes. Scrub the counter. Sweep and then mop the floor. I thought doing the kitchen was the dishes. Her definition, no. Doing the kitchen since the bar means the entire kitchen. Oh, see, I did the lady, that's right. So wipe the stove. Clean the fridge. I mean, I thought kitchen was dishes. But I'll never forget, never forget, I overheard my wife talking to someone on the phone, like I said, we're newlyweds, I overheard her talking, and she was saying that, you know, I got so much to do, to, to do I'm, I'm going to be going away, when I come back, I got to do it, I got to do it, I got to do it, and I didn't go with her, she went away, so I, I overheard, and my dad told me, as, as a new husband, he wasn't there to listen to your wife. And when you're wrong, even when you're not wrong, just say, yes, baby, I was wrong. You're new. Later on, you go tight to the base. <laughs> but at the beginning, just, 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 you know, just do what is right. But I listened to what she said, what she had to do when she gets back from her trip. She was done where she left. And I almost called for help. Because I know, even if I tell my wife, I did it. She's a real detective. She will find out that I didn't do what I said I did. So I braced myself for the challenge. I was in a one bedroom apartment, so I told myself, it shouldn't be that easy. There's not a big space, you don't have too much stuff. But when you check these corners, man, your stuff, everywhere, but first, I started with the kitchen first, from top to 
respond that when it was done, I didn't go back to the key. I didn't want my footprint to be on that tile. I made sure I ordered order food. I stayed right outside the kitchen. But I did the bedroom. And I did um, um, the bathroom. I did the living room. And we had the, 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 the swift. And I'm spraying, I'm sweeping, and I'm going, I'm going, cleaning the countertop. And then I got these gloves to touch every part of her so there's no dust because she's a detective. When she got home three days later, later she walked in, she could smell the pine saw. I made sure just two hours before she got home, I sprinkled more pine saw to set the aroma. To make it look like I did it just now, but I did it a few days ago. So the smell just faded away. She walked into the apartment, dropped her bag, couldn't believe what she was smelling. She said, did my mom come here? I said, I was the mother. She said, did your mom come here? I said, you're rude. Who did you call? So I said, well, you're, you're the de detective. Do your work. So I said to her, I clean from top to bottom. From every room, every corner, she checked. The bedroom, she checked. But the edit, my wife checked even the corner of the bedroom. From the bedroom, she checked the corner. And she's touched the, the wall, the corner feels with any dust there. But the Dunbar doing nothing. She, she smiled and she couldn't smile no more. That night, my blessing just hold my hand. <laughs> she took good care of me, is And then I realized, oh, this is how marriage works. Okay, so I don't have to, you know, I have to do what is that, that will draw her closer to me. So when I went, when I want that invention, listen, that clean, get on my knees, scrub. But I know at the end of the day, it will be worth it all. And when I see the look on her face, I said, wow, that's what it is. In the church, the same way, God is asking us, will he get on your knees ah, and clean? If you're connected to me, you would with no temptation yeah. and no power to tell you to do what you got to do. Will you get on your knees? Will you? I've seen my parents, I saw them on their knees cleaning at church. Just sitting at the house celebrating their 45th anniversary. And all of us were telling mom and dad just how your life, not what you said, what you did. I said, I said to them, and even you said, when we get old, we will never do what you did. True. Not realize we're doing exactly yeah. what they did anymore because yeah. it was in our DNA that all we yeah. saw. That all we saw because his, my dad should have had a convention and they're ready to go to convention. No, we even had enough to have a dinner here. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, you can't leave. And mom put to her that, honey, it's, it's time for us to go. Mm. <laughs> That's what they did. They log on, you know. While we're at the, the, the table eating, they log on to their church company. Yeah, tell them about it. Because that's yeah. who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're connected to God. Yeah, yeah. Comfort me. Nothing stops them, yeah. not even a celebration. Yeah. How many things stop us from being connected so to God? Yeah. You wonder why you have a connection? Because you're not connected. You're connected when you want to be connected. Yes, when you need something. You're connected when you need something. You're connected when you want prayer. Yes. That's not how this Christian life works. To the good and the bad, you must be connected. And everything is a dear fence. Now, they say when things are good. In every situation. In every situation. And when my clothes was last week. I want to thank everyone for the support for our outdoor service. Last week, two of us, Ty Kai, Harrison, Tyra, we were back in the dirt and set up outside. And for the husband, we pulled up in the beginning of this, the column began, and we're setting up. And Brother B said to us, Yo, you guys, you guys want something? I said, Martin, now, brothers, I've learned when a leader said you want something, I go quick. Yeah, and when leaders talk, you give your request. So my brother, I think that bagel, <laughs> hot 
chocolate, whatever. Harry said, put in your request. That's the word request. Harry, we put our request, and then neither came. But one of the guys said to me, yo, I've never experienced that. What do you mean? I've never, I've never experienced a leader who will be treat me like this. So I said that the reason why he's doing it is that he's seen your work. Now, mind you, if he didn't offer you to stop what you are doing, he said, no, Pastor, because this is my thing, what I, I'm called to do. But then what he did, he did what was in his heart to do. To make sure that these guys Energy. <coughs> and then later on that day, I went to another function. He didn't want to go. I was exhausted. Like, why is this guy going to go? I found the one another deacon. And he asked me how the church. So I told him what we did through him. He said, man, that's amazing. Now how are you guys doing as church? He said, why? We're hanging out by a piece of thread. <laughs> that's a leader. I said, what? This man, we're hanging out by a piece of thread. Mm. He said, I'm drained. Mm. He said, I come to a point where I come to church because I know if I don't come, things won't get done. Mm. Man said, I'm drained. He needs a checkup. Mm. He's so drained. Set him not to be difficult, not to put negativity, but once they run on empty fumes, you're going to hurt yourself, yeah. and the engine may blow up. Yeah. Any one of us drive and our gas lights on, yeah. you keep driving for a while. And so you drive, you don't do that oil change. You keep driving for a while and see what happens. Yeah. Now, what's that the oil that costs? Thirty-four dollars will cost you a lot more, thousand more bucks because you damage the engine. I said, to him, "Sir, you got to get checked." I said, "They're not connected." I said, "You got to go to the mechanic. You got to get an oil change." That's exactly what I told him. You got to get an oil change. Check your alternator. Check your brake fluid. Check, check it. Is the cannon belt thick, sir? Check it. For you to say you don't have. Joy, I know he's talking about that. I told him, I've been there. Mm. I've been there. I told my wife on December the 31st, I do not want to go to church. She broke, but she never heard me say that. I don't have no joy to play no more. Mm. I've been there. My connection was loose.
first sermon well as him. Our first sermon was praise God in advance. Those who remember that was our first sermon. I didn't realize that sermon was for me. Now when you see me, yeah. when I declare anything, yeah. So but let us say this I came into the mechanic shop. Yeah. I came, I got an oil change in, in the spirit. I got my alternate change in the spirit. I got a new brick pads yeah, in the spirit, a new timing belt, a brand new battery, a brand new alternator in the spirit. I got into a remote starter in the spirit when I got here. Oh yeah. But before I start, my engine running! Wow. I'm already know what's gonna happen for 2022. Remote starter. Yes. This church saved my life. Pop the hood and pull up 
ist der bedeutendste Ungebietchen, wie ich noch vorher hier in der Stadt. Wo ich auch noch oben. Sie hat in der Spiel mit Tagen und am Fietchen mit.
said. And the gospel for to read. I wash my mother's serve God for his name until the end. And I, I commend him for that. I don't know if you cannot say it. While we have breath in our lungs, while we can speak and worship Almighty God, let us be faithful to Him. Let us do our part and serve Him and serve Him well. So we can hear those words Welcome home, my son, my daughter, my good and faithful servant. Welcome said before, we will never arrive until we hear well done. So until then, you serve God. You don't stop. God has been like the energy of the body. Keep going and going regardless of how you feel. If you need a break, take a break. Get refueled, but get up again and keep going because our cars have to go to mechanics at some time for a checkup. And we know when we leave the car, the car still drives because it's smooth and like it's brand new all over. In this Christian journey, the same way. You need to check up. All the things are checked up. But once, uh, once you're fueled up, you should be running faster. You should be on a mission faster than before because you got topped up. Father God, I thank you. And you remind us that we need to be connected to you. Our cables need to be tight. And we need to be grounded in your word. Woo! Thank you for reminding us that we got to check ourselves. Oh God, imagine you touch your children especially. Touch their hearts. My those who are wavering, those who have slowed down, God, fill them up. First, anointing, fill them up until they overflow. Until they're going to share that anointing with someone else. And thank you for what you are doing, God. In Christ's name, all our people see. Place high priority on prayer, seeking the peace of God daily. Our passion is to cultivate a growing church, a spiritual growth church, a connected to God and others in worship, Bible study, through friendship, 
and neighborhood service, we are committed to bringing together the city of Oakland, the emerging generation into a fuller receptor to Jesus Christ and a greater in Christian communication and a caring community. We especially emphasize on encouraging every believer to receive the infilling baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, speaking in tongues and the Spirit in utterance with the evidence of spiritual fruit and the exercise of spiritual gifts. Aggressive evangelism, that's my heart. Aggressive evangelism. The church will provide training and resources through Christian education for all departments of the church and for every leader. Encourage faithfulness in your stewardship, in your tithes, in your offering. You heard me preach about that a few weeks ago. Among all leaders and members of the church, our vision for this church and purpose is to encourage and equip every believer of the local church to be soul winners and to be one who assists in nurturing and empowering fellow believers. Our greatest resources are people. At the pathetic of God, every person is unique. I am unique. There's only one gender. You are unique. We are unique. And God can use you anyway to bring glory to Him. Now let me share with you Scriptures makes it clear that members of the church are set apart from the world, offering their lives in an entirely counter manner. If you read in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 to 18, members are committed to Christ and to each other. They submit to leaders, and those leaders will answer to God one day. And that is serious business. Biblical church membership is not about celebrity pastors boasting big numbers and exposes any system in which shepherds do not know or are not caring for sheep. Membership in the New Testament focus us to wrestle with this vital question. Is church membership a big deal? And if so, should I or my church be taking it more seriously? Sometimes the idea of church membership is a myth to leaders and therefore is a fog to those they uh, to help you understand better how to serve and lead the body of Christ, here are five commitments that I find vital that, that we should embrace as church members. One, a high commitment to gathering. Two, a high commitment to discipleship. Three, a high commitment to serving. Four, a high commitment to giving. And not just in your finances. Skills, your talents. Okay? And five, a high commitment to reaching, reaching the lost, spreading the gospel, spreading the good news. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. And if you promise, please respond, I do. It's a personal question. Do you promise to support the church in its worship and work? To the best of your ability, if so, please respond, I do. Do you submit yourself to the government and business and the discipline of the church? I promise to strive this purity and peace, if so, please respond, I do. Do you promise to be Christ's disciples, to follow the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to be a witness to the healing ministry and the loving message of Jesus Christ as best as you are able to do so through what I do. Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow in faith and to be an active and joyful and crazy member of the church? If so, please respond, I do. Awesome. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it served this community and the world. This so please respond, I do. I'm at the church, please stand to your feet. To the members of this church, do you promise to help Cleveland Hill and Michaela Clark in the body of Christ to pray with them, to welcome them fully in holy friendship, to be angels for them in time of distress and servants to them in time.
time of need, if so, please respond, we will. I'm going to ask the leaders to come to stand on the side. But Ellis, but the dog went to shelter, but the mermaid, please come. Sister Susan, sister Susan, please come stand here as well. These are just leaders. I don't know if my wife and I we stand with you. We laugh with you. And yes, we will cry with you. I promise you Yes, you don't play. Keep your eyes on short. Alright? That lady? <laughs> no words. No comments. We are a loving family. When I say we cry with you, we will cry. So we don't know you're hurting, we cannot be there. And one thing I will be responsible for, and they will not be able to be responsible for. If you don't tell us, we cannot be there. Once we know, have a word. We will be there as well as the members will be there as well. So, Michaela, you have a lot of mothers here. Two of your mothers, spiritual mothers, are right there. And you got three smooth daddies on your right, right there. Now, Daddy, here, boy, I don't know how to say this. I love you, sir. I respect you. So, see, you're a good hand because you live with one leader. So, I don't have to worry too, worry too much about you because you live with a former cop. But you got the two brothers standing with you. Literally, they stand with you. And the two warriors that stand with you. Literally, they will stand and hold you. Mother was pleased to shake hands to Cleveland Hill and Michaela Clark. And the church will stand with them. Father God, I thank you for Brother Cleveland Hill and Sister Michaela Clark. As they made it their duty to be a part of this church, they understand the mandate, they understand the mission. I share it with them. And now, God, they're ready to work with us for your kingdom. Your glory. I pray for Michaela God she go to school. She will stand on the word of God. Come on, me. Even when she feels her back is against the wall. God! She will know that she has a church family. We're praying for her. And she will call upon you when she needs you. I pray. I pray this for God. And I believe. God will use Michaela to save the rest of her family. That's a prior prayer God. Through her life, her household will serve her life to you. For Brother Cleveland Hill, God, I thank you how you have kept them thus far. I can stand strong in confidence, God, as he served you and worked for your spirit and your truth. Use him honor and glory. You said to share the gospel to whoever will come into contact with him. If it's through song, or through prayer, or just through encouraging word, or just through his life. Use him. And God, I know you have great things in store for him. I know God plans for him, plans for him to prosper. So I pray for strength, clarity for these two servants. Yes, servants, I will need we place it into your care now. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost. All God will say amen. Michael, on behalf of my wife and I, sis, welcome to this crazy life. We are crazy. We don't crazy, right? Yeah, crazy. We love you. From 
up and we'll pray with you. And you are safe. You are well. All you have to do is remain connected to God. You need my cup of milk. And I promise you, one better day, you will be. And so, Sierras, bring it. Put on the wall, go back. You all check your face. As a reminder, for the times you feel like God can't do it anymore. You read the scriptures that God likes to do. As a reminder, God bless you. Love you, sis. Daddy Hill, Brother Cleveland Hill, the statesman, I thank God for you. As God continues to grant your life, I already told you already, you got cancer. The words in here, your heart, in your heart, sir. Share it. Don't keep it to yourself. As a statesman, I'm going to give a responsibility. Whenever there's a family gathering, the statesman will hold up and cry. That could be your responsibility. Because you have some grandkids, great grandkids. Sir, you know they need to be saved. Anytime there's a family gathering, I want you, sir, to hold up and cry. God will give you the words. All I ask when you pray, you pray in confidence. And you pray believing that God will do just what you have asked him to do. This is your servant. You tell your daughter to buy a frame. To hang it up, sir. And when times are rough, you read the scripture verse. Yeah. To remind you, this scripture is very important. God bless you, Daddy. Love you. Love you. God bless you. We go back to your seat. God bless you. As we grow, we grow together. We grow together. Let's prepare ourselves before communion. Twenty eight, twenty ten, come. Let's just sing a song to me for communion. Your song. As we prepare. For the communion, I always say that this is a time where we need to evaluate ourselves. Yeah. This is where it's really between you and God. No one else. Yeah. At this point, no one else really matters. No one really matters right now. It's you and your heavenly. So I'm going to Raquel, she will lead you row by row. Come get your emblems and you go back to your seat and then you will do your seat. Yes.
same way also he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink. Father God, we thank you. We adore you. We worship you and we celebrate you. Thank you for your son who died on the cross. We saw a thing called 10,000 angels to destroy the world. But he died so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. For that, we are grateful. We got that. For that, we are thankful. And all God we receive. Amen. We would like to thank you so much for not only watching, but participating in our service today. This is not the only way that you can connect with Bethesda Church of God. You can also reach us on Instagram at Bethesda underscore Oakville, on Facebook at Bethesda Church. And if you wanted to talk to us directly, one-on-one, -on -one, you can reach us at BethesdaCOG1 at gmail.com. Have a blessed week, and I hope this won't be the last time that you encounter with Bethesda Church of God. If you have some questions in the corners of your mind and traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, reflections of your past seem to face you every day. But this one thing I do know that Jesus is. Jesus is the way. Yeah.
that you think you cannot fly. I know your skies are dark. You think the sun won't shine. In case you don't know, but the word of God is true. And everything he's promised, he will do it for you. That's the reason I say. Right where you are. 